Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In this video, I am going to say what I would do if I had to start learning Linux all over again. When I first started using Linux, it wasn't as easy as it is today. Hardware support was minimal and the apps were far more basic than they are today. And support came from tutorials in magazines, IRC chat and a lot of trial and error. I still maintain I would have a full head of hair if I hadn't started on this journey all those years ago. So in today's video, these are the steps I would follow if I had to start all over again. The first thing I would do is get started. Now this sounds stupid, right? But you can watch as many videos like this as you want to. But until you actually start using Linux, you won't, learn, you won't learn a thing. Now there's quite a lot of advice online about starting by using a virtual machine or by dual booting. Using a virtual machine makes quite a lot of sense because you won't break your main operating system. Whereas there's always a chance when dual booting that you will make a mistake. When I first started using Linux, I think I broke Windows at least a dozen times whilst trying to set up a dual boot. If you can get a cheap spare machine, then that would be a good tool to use to aid your learning. You can get a small mini PC for just over £100 or a Raspberry Pi. A mini PC would be better in the long term as the rules you learn for installing on a mini PC will be the same as laptops or other desktop PCs. When it comes to picking a distro, just pick one and stick with it. There's no need to distro hop and it makes sense to use a distro that is easily accessible like Mint, Ubuntu, Zorin, etc. With Linux installed, you should learn the basics such as setting up Wi-Fi, printing and Bluetooth, and also learn how to install software. Use the built-in graphical software manager at first, but it's definitely worth learning about the different package formats. Learn what a Debian package is, a flat pack, a snap package, and an app image. If you have gone down the Fedora route, find out about RPMs. And if you have taken the challenge to learn an Arch-based distro, then you should learn about Pac-Man and the AUR. But I really don't recommend starting with an Arch-based distro. Learn how to navigate your file system, and again use the graphical tools at first. Try plugging in different devices like USB drives, external hard drives, and if you have a NAS, try connecting to it. With the basics out of the way, you are now in a position to learn something a bit more in depth, and you can now venture into the dreaded terminal. There are key areas to learn when using the terminal, as there are when using the GUI. First, you can learn how to keep your system up to date and how to install and run packages. Learn about updating your repositories, upgrading packages, and the man command is very useful for learning how to use most commands. Learn how to install Debian packages, how to remove them, how to purge them, etc. Then the next thing I would do is learn how to navigate the file system using the terminal and learn what all the key system folders are for. Essentially, you will want to learn how to work out where you are in the file system, how to navigate to other folders, how to list contents of folders, how to make folders, delete folders, create files, remove files, and edit files using tools such as Nano. With that out of the way, you can now learn how drives work and how to mount them. And you can learn about different devices like USB devices or block devices, PCI devices, and how to list them and interact with them. Then you can learn something like how to get a list of running processes using the ps command and learn how to use htop to list all running processes. You can also learn how to format drives using fdisk as this is a neat tool to learn in case you need to set up a drive from scratch and you're on a system without a GUI. One thing we have today that we didn't have when I started using Linux is AI. I thoroughly recommend using AI when you get stuck but try and understand whether it's telling you something that makes sense because sometimes it gets it wrong. For instance, Google's Gemini appears to call a body of water near Mexico the Gulf of America for some reason. There is absolutely no requirement to learn the terminal in Linux, but when you have learned it, you feel a lot more in control of your operating system. This is also true of Windows. PowerShell makes life so much easier when you understand how it works. But for now, that is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you next time on Everyday Linux User.